<laughs> What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Supreme Decisions. And today, I actually want to talk to you about a podcast that I'm doing. It's called The Warrant Requirement. It's going to be available on all your major podcasting platforms. Now, here's the great thing about that. I'm going to deal with some of the myths that's going to be, or that is out there. And it's going to stem from pretty much one case. Mally V. Briggs. Well, in the context of that, I want to give you something. And I'm going to read from you just a little bit. I want to make sure there's accuracy in what I'm speaking about. And this actually comes from the John Marshall Law Review. Often you hear me speak about Harvard Law Review. Well, just like any other thing that you do, you constantly do research and make sure what you're doing is proper. This is also one of the places that give me kind of intel on this. But you hear me constantly talk about suing a, per a police officer in their individual or personal capacity and not worrying about the 1983. Well, the reason why Mally V. Briggs is in this because it gave you context on why I say that. And what it goes into a police officer who causes an individual to be unconstitutionally arrested by presenting a judge with a complaint and an affidavit unsupported by probable cause is entitled to only qualified, not absolute immunity from liability in civil actions. Now, here's where the break is, because here's where understanding comes in. Sue directly the police officer who unlawfully caused them to be arrested. Note that it doesn't have anything to do with the 1983. And it speaks directly to suing the police officer in their individual capacity when they violate the law. So what you do, a police officer who causes an individual to be unconstitutionally arrested by presenting a judge with a complaint. Now, in this context, the complaint itself is the police report that I constantly tell you to get or the warrant application. An affidavit unsupported by probable cause is entitled to only qualified, not absolute immunity from civil liability in civil rights actions. This is again, when I tell you to sue, it's not under 1983, it's under civil rights violations because when they're violating a federal right a state cannot authorize them to do so now when you're doing this you're suing the police officer directly in their individual capacity this is why i say these things it's not rocket science it is only what is written and this is why you follow the processes that are set forth before you so keep that in mind Love you guys. Continue to support the podcast. We're also going to have a new one that drops October 1st. It's going to be called Supreme 846, as well as we're going to be doing some other things with the t-shirts. We're going to be doing some things on Patreon, and we're also going to be branching out and doing other visual podcasts, even call in question and answers. So let's keep going. Let's keep growing. And don't forget, grab your t-shirts and Supreme out.